Big news yesterday, five minutes before the end of the show, got word that Tiger Woods was going to uh, not compete at Augusta. And you could pretty much guarantee Tiger would be a top 10 guy, top five guy at Augusta. But playing through pain and deciding that it was, uh, it was time to have surgery here. His good friend Noda Begay, works for the Golf Channel, joins us now. Did you see this coming, Noda? Well, I thought it was, it was very much a, a high likelihood of happening. I've been some real candid and close discussions with him last month when I was I was staying down at his at his house during the Honda Classic, and I could relate to all the symptoms. The, the similar herniation in, in my disc is what's caused me to sort of walk away from golf and, and get into television. And so I knew all the symptoms. I knew all the issues with just trying to do – get enough treatment to get on the golf course and, and do all the things that he was doing to just to try and complete a round of golf. And I knew that it was a, it was a progressively downward sliding scale because the, the injury starts to affect other areas of your body and eventually it affects your swing. And we saw that at the Cadillac championship, he couldn't even get into his putting stance by the back nine because he was in such discomfort. But if you know you have this, you know that it's leading to something more, then why not have surgery earlier? If he, if you knew what it was, you're friends with him and could have seen this coming. Well, I think the, the big issue is that athletes don't always make the best decisions <laughs> for themselves. <laughs> and they, they think they're invincible at times and, and, I know that we could classify a lot of great athletes in, in that category. And I just think that most athletes feel like they can, they can endure the pain. It's almost a badge of honor to go out there and, and try and tough it out and, and show everybody, hey, I can play through this or I can, I can make it better. Or there's so many other extenuating circumstances that surround the actual performance on the court or the course or the field that cause athletes to make bad decisions as it relates to their health. And I think that you would, would agree with me that it, a lot of athletes could take time off, especially in golf. I mean, it's not like the NFL where there's only 16 games and there's everything on every single game. But in golf, the season is so long. So maybe you could have possibly done this a little earlier. But I think it's it's not the best time. But I think that he's looking down the road to try and get get back on the course and play the type of golf he's capable of. Is he just acting like a middle-aged golfer? I mean, let's be fair here. I know that he's Tiger and infallible and, you know, it didn't seem like he was mortal. Now at his age, 38, he just seems like he's a middle-aged golfer. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things, and, and we, we laugh about it. I'm, I'm 41. He's 38. My rookie year on the tour, I was 26, and he was 19. I mean, it was. Um, time flies, and, and the injuries – they hurt a little more and they take a little bit longer to, to heal and and you wake up a little more sore in the morning and it's a little harder to get warmed up. I mean he's he's experiencing all those things. I mean and so I think that there has to be some some real hard questions asked of, of his team as to how, how hard can he push himself in the gym and, and how much how much emphasis should be put on preventative um, training techniques versus strength and conditioning. And then how much practice he should be putting in because, I mean, I think most people that follow golf would agree. When you watch Tiger Woods warm up on the range, it's it's a stripe show. He just hits there and just hits ball after ball, just perfect. And then he goes on the course and his, his cadence changes at times. And sometimes that's due to just discomfort in the body and push the envelope and the body just doesn't respond. He's Noda Begay of the Golf Channel, former college teammate of uh, Tiger Woods, joining us Dan Patrick show. Why did his body? Why is his body breaking down? Well, I, I think aside from the NFL, golf could probably be the the worst thing for a back. I mean, and it, it's all predicated, I think, in, in my opinion, on what I've seen. I spent a lot of time on training tables and in in doctors' office, but it's based on body type. Guys that use their lower body and, and drive into the ball to create lag and and power have a tendency to experience low back and hip issues. You see Greg Norman and, and Nicholas and, and now Tiger. I mean, Norman and Nicholas had hip replacements and, and Tiger's having this this small procedure done. And taller players like, like a Love, Davis Love, ha, has had neck and shoulder problems his whole career because he generates his leverage in a different way. So 
it's just a bad sport for your for your back. And but remember and, uh, when he started out, Noda, that people wondered if his swing would hold up. It was so violent and so much torque and so much pressure on his knee. Is that what it came down to, or did he get too bulked up? Uh, you know, wanting to keep up with these younger guys and hitting it where they hit it. Well, I think the the thing uh, the the knee was, I think, the biggest indicator that the swing did take a toll on his body. I mean, when when he he's had multiple surgeries on his knee, and because it, it's not generating the power, Dan, that's the problem. It's stopping it after the impact. So that's oh. where you see these guys' hips. That's why their hips and their left shoulders, and in Kaiser's case, his left knee were the ones that gave out because you got to put the brakes on. I mean, even in your car, your brakes wear out if, if you drive fast all the time. And that, that, that's what that's what the biggest, I guess, challenge is for the golfers is how do I slow all this power down? And now you're seeing more athletic players like Dustin Johnson come out who are, are really athletes. I mean, they could do well, in, not professionally, but, I mean, they could do well in other sports. And um, But why did Tiger it, get bulked up? Well, I think that every every athlete goes through a period in, in their career where they're saying, "Well, what can I? Where can I push the envelope? Where where can I improve? I'm I'm beating everybody on the golf course and and doing things well and and I think that he felt like it was in his best interest to to maybe put a little bit more muscle on. But if you look real closely, and and I've actually gone through this with him, is that he bulked up. And then he realized that it wasn't all that great for him. Then he leaned out, and then he kind of found a happy medium. He's very happy where he's at right now. He knows exactly how much muscle mass he has and where his target weight should be to perform at an optimal rate for him. And so I think he's found a balance. Now, I think that everything that has transpired in the last 10 or 15 years, I mean, we were coming up on his 20th Masters appearance, um, I think, in 2015. And I was with Tiger and Earl when we all drove down Magnolia Lane for the very first time because I was tagging along because I, I wasn't in school and, and uh, he let me be a part of that. But, I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. Is Jack Nicklaus's record safe? I don't think so. Just I wouldn't write that, that one off just yet. I think that and from my standpoint, the hardest major that Tiger was going to have to win is the 15th. I mean, the next one is the hardest. If, if he can get that done in the next two years, then I think it would renew that chase. It would it would reestablish his confidence that he can go into major championships and and win. I but mean, if he doesn't win the, in the next two years a major, Jack's record safe? I, I would yeah, I would put it in, in more of a safer category at that point. But he's had great chances. He's had five chances in the last two years where he's been either in the lead or near the lead going into Sunday and has just put has just put together very poor performances. I mean, to be fair, it just it, what, he didn't play well on Sunday. Well, he can't put together four great rounds as consistently as he used to, and he's not making those putts like he once did. I mean, he's he's acting like he's middle-aged there. I, I you know, to to be fair to the situation there, he's acting like a lot of these golfers are, but he's Tiger Woods, therefore there's more of a spotlight on him and, you know, the countdown, the clock is ticking here. So you know, I think that's why there's so much attention to this and people wondering if we've seen the best. What's more amazing here, Noda? I'll leave you with this. What Tiger did to win those majors or the fact that he's gone this long without winning a major? What surprises you more? Well, I would I would say what he did to win those majors and how he did. I mean, the 2000 campaign and the 208 U.S. Open victory were just things we may never see again. And but I wouldn't I wouldn't write write the guy off yet. I mean, let's see how he recovers. I think the the biggest emphasis needs to be placed on the recovery period now. To take enough time off to let that scar tissue heal up because I herniated my disc twice and that's kind of what pushed me out of golf. But that scar tissue is is vital to the recovery process and needs to stay away from golf for enough time to let that. What's he going to be like to be up. around, Noda? Not, it's not going to be very pleasant. In the next <laughs> he was in good spirits yesterday. I talked to him yesterday. He was in good spirits. But, I mean, after you have a procedure, you, you have to be in good spirits and positive because your body will follow your mindset. So you got to believe you're going to get better, and he's great at that. But I mean, you get it, when you're away from golf and you're, you're confined to 
being at home and, and not doing the things that you're used to doing, man, it, you get cranky and, and, and a lot of things just really don't <laughs> settle well with you. So I'm sure it's not going to be too much fun to be around. Noda, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure, uh, man. Thanks. Noda Begay, Golf Channel analyst and uh, good friends with Tiger Woods.